Hi, this is Matt at AppWorks, and we're going to continue in our FileMaker Basics series, and we're going to talk today about the let function, which sometimes is called let notation. So as with the case statement, we're going to start by going to the data viewer, because this is a great place to write calculations and test your code. Here is a very, very simple let statement that I started, and let's talk a little bit about the pieces and parts of a let statement. Okay, so there's two halves basically there's the top and the bottom of the let and the top half consists of where you define your variables and so in that case the cl is my first variable and you define each variable to be an expression which usually is just like a field from your database or it could be some kind of a any kind of a, a custom any kind of a function actually um, in filemaker and then the second part the bottom half of your let statement is a calculation and which which goes kind of in at the end of the uh, the semicolon which breaks the top and the bottom. Okay, so let's take a little bit more close look at this because there's a couple parts that are important. Um, so first of all, you have the one parentheses at the beginning and at the end here, and that basically is your whole function there. And then if you have multiple variables and expressions at the top, you need a bracket. Uh, a square bracket to separate them. So CL is customer credit limit. And then I'll put a semicolon which goes to the next line. And then the next thing that I want to do is maybe like balance, which will be the unpaid balance. So I can just start typing here and then grab that in there. Uh, and then maybe I want something else like uh, the total uh, all invoices. So all could be the total of invoices. And then for the last line, you don't want a semicolon here, right? So if you put a semicolon in for the very, very last one, it's gonna kind of break your calculation, but as soon as you take it out, you can see that it's, it's actually showing me a number here um, from the database. I'm gonna step back a little bit and, and say that I really believe that let functions, as complex as they might seem, actually really make things simpler in your database. So let's take a further look at that. And they really get simple when you pair them with a case statement. Um, in a previous lesson in our case statement, we were looking at um, some words to show if there was a certain situation for credit. So for example, if a customer had no credit limit, <coughs> um, if the credit limit was empty, I'll just write a quick case statement here. If is empty, and here's where it becomes really nice, CL, rather than this whole long expression of the credit limit, if it's empty CL, um, then no credit limit, set. Otherwise, let's say the credit limit is way too high. Um, so the credit limit is like over 40,000, which is our current allowed amount maybe. If credit limit is greater than 40,000, then Too much credit. Let's just stop there for now. By the way, when I put a case statement in, um, that, added, that added one more parentheses, so I have to add one more closed parentheses down here. So once I do that, unless I made any other errors, I should be able to save that. And I, it did allow me to save it. So um, then what's nice is I can actually just flip through my records here. And this one has no credit limit, so it's showing me the message no credit limit because there's no dollar amount here in the credit limit. So as soon as I put one in, let's say $5,000, now there's a credit limit, so there's no error. Let's make the credit limit $50,000. Now the error comes in as too much credit. So I can keep iterating on this, which is great. So let's add another line that says, um, let's say that their credit limit is over their total um, unpaid invoice balance. Sorry, the other way around. Their total invoice balance, BAL. If balance is greater than CL, then I can have an error that says um, over credit limit, which is great. Um, and then I can also have another one if balance is less than CL, then all systems good, right? All is fine. 
Uh, so I can kind of keep adding whatever kind of messages I want. And what's great is I can keep referring to these things that I define, these variables I defined at the top, um, multiple times. And it makes my case statement really nice and clean and simple. OK, um, let's take a look and flip through some records and see kind of how this works. So let's say we have another one. This one has no credit limit set. Um, this one has no credit limit set. And there's also no invoices. Um, Let's go back to one of these earlier ones. So this is one that has a credit limit. And it's all is fine because their credit limit is $1,000 and their invoices are only $612 that they haven't been paid. So if we were lower their credit limit to say 500, then it would be over credit limit. And if we take their credit limit out entirely, then we get no credit limit. So it's going to do this calculation in order. Um, so the case statement works that way. As soon as it hits the first thing that's true, then it stops and shows whatever message is set right there. So that's pretty basics for let function. And I hope you get a chance to play with these and realize, as I have, that it really makes life much simpler. Um, pretty much uh, almost every calculation that I write that's going to have a case, if it's going to refer to field data, I, I pretty much start with a let notation and a let function to make my life easier. Thanks for your time.